Welcome back to the experimental platform tutorial series. Um, so far we have created a platform base for our little character to run along. We've collected, sorry, we've created coins that rotate with a rotate animation that we made. We've created a death scenario where if he falls, he respawns back at the beginning here with a particle effect. We've re uh, we've created movable platforms that move left and right inside these gaps that you've got to jump onto and then a bigger one here and we've created an exit where if we touch the exit we win and we go to the next layout which is the you win screen. What we're going to do today is we are going to add a fade in and fade out function. So when the level begins we're going to call a function that fades from black into the level. When we die, we're going to call that function. So we fade out, we fade into black, and we fade back in when the level restarts. It just makes transitioning from different parts of the game a little bit more seamless. So let's get straight on and do just that. First of all, we need to create a new layer because like the HUD layer that we did last time, the fade layer is going to be available on every single level because every single level that begins and ends we want to be using that same fade feature we don't want to be rebuilding it every time we do a new level so let's add a layer to the top and in capitals remember I like to call I like to use capitals for all my global layers so I can just see at a glance okay which one's global and which one's not so on the fade layer we change global to yes and again we're going to parallax zero because we don't want it to move around we don't want to leave it behind rather when we start moving off we want it to always be just over this viewpoint the whole time so now we need to build it on the fade layer double click create a sprite uh, well we do a tile background color it black make sure the alpha is 255 color it black and then what we're going to do, we're going to come over here and stretch it out so it covers the entire viewport. So now if we play the game, because that's set to uh, a parallax of zero, all we're going to see is a black screen. And that's exactly what it should be. Now what we need to do at the beginning of the level is fade this in. So let's give it a name. It's a tile background. I like to start on my tile background as TB underscore and I'm going to call it fade just so we know what we're referencing. Go to the event sheet, we're going to tidy this up as well at some point and put it, stuff into groups and make it a little bit more manageable. Um, but right now let's just right click, add a function. We're going to call this one the fade in function. Click OK. Um, we can duplicate this um, and, and create the fade out function. So what, what do we want to happen when we call this function? Well, we want that fade, this big black box, to slowly fade from black uh, to, to an opacity of zero. So the way we're going to do that is by tweening. So select the shape, click on behaviors, add a tween behavior, go back to the event sheet. So when we call this function, the first action is going to be TB fade. Scroll down, tween one property, and we're going to tween the opacity. The end value is going to be zero and I want that to happen. I want it to go from black to, to, to see-through in 0.5 seconds. I'm going to leave everything else the same and I'm going to click done. Now if we just go back here at the top of the level, actually we need to add it in. Let's um, add, an, add an event. Let's go system. Scroll right to the bottom. On start of layout, so when the level begins I like to keep these at the top because it's the start. First thing we're going to do on start a layout is we're going to go to functions and we're going to call the fade in function. So let's just try it, see if it works. There, and we faded it in. Simple. Now, if we click here, just on the little arrows, we can select the whole thing. Hold down command or control and just drag out a copy. And we're going to rename this to fade out. Double click on the action. We're going to fade the opacity, but this time the end value is going to be 100. It's still going to take 0.5 seconds, and that's going to fade out. So now, when we die, I want to call that fade out function, so it fades to black. 
So let's go on player on collision with um, the the collision detector collision death sprite. We're going to go function fade out. That's going to happen first. Then we're going to destroy the player, reset him back to the beginning, and then because this is not going to be the start of a layout, we're going to need to call the fade in function at the very end. But this all happens pretty quick. So actually, no, it should be fine because we've got that wait one second um, command in there. So let's just test it. Let's just see if that works. We may need to do a little bit of tweaking with the kind of timings, but let's see. We should fade out when we die and then fade back in. Perfect. So now, yeah. I like that. I think maybe it could wait slightly for us to die. So when we die, let's copy that weight, hold down command or control, drag out a copy, put it at the top, change it to 0.5 seconds, hit play again. So now the system's going to wait half a second when we die. Oh, that's no good because then that makes us miss that. Okay, let's take that out for now. We can look at that later if we want to tweak it. Yeah, the reason it's doing that is because maybe we've got the wrap. In fact, in fact, what am I what am I saying? Let's just take the wrap. We only use the wrap on there as an example. Let's go to behaviors. Let's get rid of wrap. Delete that. So now when he falls off the bottom of the screen, he's um he's not going to fall through the top. So if we just drag these down a bit, that should be exactly enough time this to work perfectly. Fade us in, form me off, probably. In fact, why, why do we have so many of these? What am I thinking? Let's just do one, put it along the bottom, drag it down to there, make sure it covers everything, and then let's just play that. Collect some coins, die, come back. Great, I'm happy with that. That looks great. Die, fade out, come back. Perfect. So that's the fade out function done, pretty much. When we get to the end of the level, let's call that fade out function again. So on collision with sprite exit, we're going to fade out after the one second. We're going to destroy them. In fact, let's fade out there. And then we'll wait one second, and then we're going to go to layout two. Let's just complete the level, see how that looks. I just like playing my own levels. Click the coins, which we can add sound effects. We will add sound effects later. I'll show you where to get all the sound effects you need for your games. Completely free of charge and royalty free. Come on. Move across on the platform. I'm not too worried about all the coins. Just want to get to the end. Perfect. You win. Great. Okay. Now the next thing I want to add is a timer. So I want to set a level timer so that we've got a certain amount of time in order to complete a level. And if we don't reach the exit in the time, then we're going to die and get sent back to the beginning. And then the timer is going to restart. And that's going to add an element of uh, difficulty to the levels. So the first thing I want to do before I do that is I want to go back and I want to start tidying up this because it's starting to get a little bit more complicated now. We've got lots of different functions. So when uh, when we get to this stage, I'd like to start putting things into groups. So right click, add a group. We're going to call the first group player controls. Drag this one to the top. Right uh, click on the group and then hold down control, copy, paste. Right click, edit, I'm going to call this one initialize, which is basically what's going to happen at the beginning of the level. You can drop that one down. So this on start a layout can go in there, just drag it straight up and then you can close it. The player controls is what happens when we push A, D and W. Hold those, select all of those, drag them into player controls. Um, then I want another group, so we right click at the bottom, add group. Let's call this one collisions for now. I may change it up later. And then this is what happens. Um, 
do I want to do that? No, I don't think I do. Edit that. Let's call this one something nice and cheerful like player death. What happens when the player dies? Just drag that in there. Um, I also want to add a group, another group. Player um, level exit. So what happens when we exit? We'll drag that in there. Then we've got navigation controls here. So I'll add another group and we'll call this menu navigation. Put that there. Put that in there. Player on collision with coins. So let's add another group and let's call this collect apples. in there. Every tick, this is going to go in the initialize group. So when the game starts, we want to call the fade in function and then every tick, every moment throughout the game, we're going to keep that score updated. And then we'll have one more group here and we're going to call it functions. So all of our functions can go in there. All right. That's great, I've got all of those things nice and organized. Now let's go and make a level timer. So we've got this big black square here, which I don't like. So let's lock that fade layer and just take it off of visibility. And now we've got this text score up here. So what I wanna do is right click and I wanna clone that object and I wanna click anywhere in there. I put it on the fade layer. If you do that by mistake, it's always gonna put it on the layer, whichever's selected over here. You can simply go over to the um, properties panel and just change that layer to HUD. Relock and disappear. And then the timer, let's put the timer in the top right. So on the text alignment, we're going to align that to the right. Everything else towards the center, I can bring that in one. And we're going to change the name of this from text underscore score to text underscore time. Now, like we did with the score, we're going to need to create a global variable in order to track it. So you can click on it, control, paste, copy, paste, double click it, just call it time. The number, this is the amount of seconds we want the clock to start with. Um, we can change this whenever we want, but just for the sake of testing purposes, so we're not waiting around all the time, I'm going to just say 10. Um, oh, that name already exists in the system. So let's double click it and let's call it timer. 10 seconds, go. So now, the same thing we did with the score, we want to set every tick, we want to set the text underscore time, and we're going to set the text to timer. Again, the global variable timer there. I'm going to set that so that this is going to show in that text um, object on the screen. Now we just need to set um, a condition that says every second of the game we need to subtract one from the timer and we can do that in the initialize group by adding an event under system scroll to the bottom every x seconds every one second is what it defaults to and that's perfect because that's exactly how we want the timer to tick down so every one second I want to go to system and I want to subtract from if you drop this down these are all your variables I want to subtract from the timer just one. Now, if we play that, you're going to see the timer tick down. It's over in the right hand side there. But when it gets to zero, you'll notice we don't die because we haven't told the system to kill us. And it's just going to go into the minuses. So we need to stop that. We need to say if the timer reaches zero, then we need to do some things. So let's add another group. We're going to call this level timer. I'll put this near the top because I want it near the initialized group. So this is going to be all the conditions and events that we need in order to control that, that level timer. So let's add an event to level timer. We're going to go system and we're going to compare the variable. So we're going to ask the system to check that timer. 
So we're going to go, we want to check the timer and we want to see what happens. We want to see if that timer is less than or equal to zero. So if it's on zero or any of the minuses, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call a function fade out. Um, in fact, what we could do, we've got a player of death down here. What happens when we collide with that? We've got all of these functions. If we were to, to kill the player when we get to a zero uh, on the level timer, we'd have to effectively copy all of this again and put it up here. That's not really that good practice. So I think what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll create a function for it. So if we go into, if we go to the bottom right click, add a function, and I'm going to call this player death. And then what I'll do, instead of having all of this here, I'm going to just select it all, and I'm going to drag it down, and I'm going to put it here in the player death function, and I'm going to drag that into functions. So now when we die, I'm going to just call that function, and I'm going to pop it right there in the middle. So instead of having those four lines of, of code in there, which we would then potentially have to repeat up there, I'm just going to call that function, that player death function, when we die, which is all now nice and neatly put down in this function at the bottom. And now that means I can call that same function up here when we die. And then I can go ahead and copy this, drag out copy and put it in there. So now when the level reaches zero, we're going to fade out, kill the player, fade back in. Exactly the same thing that happens when we reach when we hit um, that collision box if we fall off the edge. So let's just test it out. We'll go up here, collect some coins, wait for the timer to tick down, and then hopefully we've got that right. Die. Timer keeps ticking, but it doesn't reset us back. Why doesn't it do that? Let's have a look. So on player death, we destroy the player, we wait one second, spawn particles, it's because we've got a conflicting condition I think, because the timer is e okay, because the timer is less than or equal to zero, it's calling these functions over and over again because we're constantly in the minuses. So what we want to do is click on, uh, click on this whole event here, push B on the keyboard, or you can right click and add a blank sub event. But if we just push B, double click on that bar there, go to system, and what we want to do is trigger once. So we don't want it to go over and over again while the timer is going into the minuses. So let's copy all of that and just drag it down into trigger once while true. Now, once we've triggered all of this, what we need to do is then set the timer back to 10. So the last action we're going to do here is system set value set timer back to 10 and let's test it out now so time is ticking down so it's more than zero it's not less than or equal to zero so we're allowed to play when we get to t there we go we're back at the beginning it does reset to 10 first though, which I don't like. We may have to tweak that. Yeah, it resets back to 10 straight away and then starts ticking down. So if the timer is less than or equal to zero, we're going to, let's just add in. Let's add in a wait one second before we do that, because we've got some delays in here. If you look at the, um, if you look at the functions here, yeah, we've got a one second delay on player death. So while that's happening and waiting, this is already updated. So we'll add that one second in there just to allow for that to happen. And now, hopefully, that should happen all at the same time. Three, two, one, zero, respawn, and we're back. Yeah. Three, two, one, zero, respawn, we're back. The only thing is now, when we die and fall off the edge, we respawn and the timer doesn't reset. So let's add that in and make sure that that, let's make sure that that is 
working fine. So if we go back down to the function, um, no, on player death, sorry, on player death, in fact, let's put the reset timer on player death. That makes more sense. So we're going to wait one second, we're going to spawn, then we're going to reset. Every time we die, instead of having it up here, that should fix everything. It's almost too simple sometimes and I can't even see it. So now, fall off the edge, die, reset, back to 10. Lovely. Wait for the timer to tick down. Dead. Restart. Okay, now all I want to do, one last thing before we finish, I want to add that particle effect when we die. I want it to almost explode once we've died. So I'm going to take that spawn reparticles. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to drag it down just before we destroy the player. We want to spawn in those particles. Um, yeah, that's fine. We might do a function for level X here. We probably will because we're going to be exiting multiple levels. But for now, I, I'm pretty happy with that. We've got the player death function. So now we don't have to worry about doing any kind of um, scripting when we die. We simply just call that and it works no matter what level we're on, no matter where we are. Let's just see if he explodes. Two, one, explode. But we didn't fade out. Let's just see why. Wait one second. Okay, because this is taking one second to happen. All we need to do on this function is add a weight 0.5. Put that in before. Put it in before. And now we should be okay. I'm hoping we should be okay. Three, two, one, destroy. No, he's not fading out. Why is he not fading out when he dies? Player death. Okay. We don't need that. Silly. We don't need that on the fade out. We need it on the fade. We need it on the player death to allow for the fade out to happen, and then fade in. That can maybe stay at 0.5. We might change it later. Four, three, two, one. Okay. Why is that not working? So we die. Let's put that at the end. We die, we destroy, we wait one second, then we fade out. Have I have I cracked it? We can also, if you saw that, I can move actually while the fade was happening. We'll disable the player controls in the next episode to make sure that, that doesn't happen. There we go. That's better. We destroy and we go back. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now. We're going to fix a few of those little bugs later on. Um, but for the most part, we've got that working just fine. Um, we've got the fade in, fade out. We've got uh, the timer, which kills us if we don't reach the level in time. And again, we can change that because it's a global. We can change that at any point and it'll affect everything in here. Thanks for sticking around. And if you like it, leave it a like and a comment. And I will see you in the next one.